So, I made this Emmy Groomy head and body. Now I have to decide how these two lumpy squishies are going to eventually come together and become my new friend. Because I'm lonely. This is high priority. I've already done a little sketching in my sketchbook here, and now I'm going to hop onto the computer and finalize the design. Hello, I'm Zakira, and welcome back to my channel. So going into this character design, I had a few criteria that it had to meet. One, it had to work with the head and body I already made, obviously. Two, it had to correlate with the colors of yarn that I already had. Three, it had to be realistically possible to make, but still pose a challenge to me as an amateur amigurumi crochet person. <laughs> and four, it had to be really, really, really stinking cute. As I went into my friend's design, I knew I wanted to add a bunch of things like ears and a tail and other details that would add more interest to the character and also pose a challenge to make. And also to up the cuteness, you know? So I toyed with pointy ears versus floppy ears, a bushy tail or a little bunny pom-pom tail, muzzle or no muzzle, long arms, short arms, and somewhere down the design process, I also figured, hey, let's just put some leaves. No idea why. I have this really nice lime green slash sap green colored yarn, and I thought it would be fun to use, and I mean, green equals leaves, right? I drew this character in a few different poses, uh, really just for fun, because the only pose that was really important was the regular arms down straight pose. Since I'm making this character into a stuffed toy, it's not going to be able to move in many different positions anyway, but a character sheet just, just doesn't feel complete without at least a couple of more interesting poses to show some, some personality. In the end, I settled for floppy ears, leaf tail, no muzzle, long arms, and some pink spots. And all put together, this plump, leafy little buddy is named... Corby! Or Corb, you know, if you don't take a liking to ease. Or if you really take a liking to ease, you can go for the ever fancy Corbet. I'm not used to making non-human OCs. Uh, I don't think I ever really made any non-human OCs before Corby, except for Whalefly and Blue and Yukio's toy. Hey wait, Blue and Yukio's toy look really similar. Huh. And BZ and Yam the Turtle and these beans, and this cake. Oh wait, I'm not supposed to show you that one yet. Okay, so I guess I have made some non-human OCs, but not as many as human ones, and I definitely find it more difficult to design non-human characters, which makes sense because I mostly draw human characters, but also kinda is strange when you really think about it because non-human characters can really be anything that you want. You can have full creative freedom, but ironically, I think that because I have full creative freedom, I end up not being able to come up with anything. Guess I'm just not that creative? I find it easier to work with something and find creative ways to portray or use already created things, like human beings. And even in Corby's case, it was a little easier to come up with his design because I had limitations to adhere to, like my yarn colors and the head and body I already made. So I think it, it just made it a little easier. Do you guys find it easier to be creative within limitations? Or do you find just full blank canvas, full creative freedom to be easier to work with? I'd love to hear other artists' perspective. Just to see how it would look, I tried a few color changes, um, but in the end, still like the original color scheme, so I just went with that. And ta-da! It's Corby! After the character sheet was finished, it was time for Corby to go through the artistic ritual that is the rite of ascension for all OCs to officially make it into the ever-expanding hall of OCs. A full detailed illustration. So I'm gonna go and put on some music, and draw, and vibe, and get back to chatting with you guys in a bit.
How's it going? So I know that some people may look at Corby and say he looks like a Pokemon, but no, 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 no. I don't care if he has leaves, which would make him a perfect grass type Pokemon. He is not a Pokemon. Okay, maybe he does look like a Pokemon. But come on, it isn't my fault. It isn't my fault that a single franchise managed to make hundreds and hundreds of adorable things. It's basically impossible to create a made up creature without it looking like a Pokemon. But, haha, I have actually never played Pokemon. Okay, well that's actually not true. I did play the original Pokemon Red. I think it was for the Game Boy Advance. It was in color, but it was old. But I didn't even get past Gym 3, and I haven't been- I haven't played it since then, so... I have an excuse. <laughs> if Corby looks like any specific Pokemon that already exists, that is pure coincidence. Because I don't even know what a Sand Slash looks like. Sad, but true. So anyway, back to the illustration. Since Corby is clearly fond of leaves, I knew I wanted to draw him in some sort of leafy green area. At first, though, I thought he'd be sitting by a lake on the ground, like in the grass, um, and leaning against the tree trunk. But then, by accident, I turned off my sketch layer after filling in the tree, and it looked like Corby was sitting in a tree branch, and I was like, aha! That's even better! I mean, Corby's got long, like, sloth-like arms and, and leaves attached to his body. It just makes sense that he's a treetop dweller. I love painting blurry backgrounds. They give such a cool photo-like effect, and they're also so much easier to paint than in-focus backgrounds, which is great because I'm lazy. <laughs> At least it's a lot easier to do digitally. I don't I don't think I've ever painted a blurry background with traditional mediums. I'm not really sure how to achieve that. Another thing I love to paint is that light filtering through the trees effect, otherwise known as komorebe. That Japanese word just may be the main reason I like to paint <laughs> that effect, just so I can say komorebe in my videos. Like, ha! Look at my sophisticated Japanese language knowledge. I'm using my Tombow Fudensuke. Fudensuke. I am so smart. So smart. To do the light filtering through the trees effect, uh, all I do is make a glow dodge layer and then use a light airbrush tool to put some spots of light in various areas and like that is it. Really easy effect to do digitally and looks super cool. Sometimes to achieve the look I want, I have to put the whole painting in shadow uh, first before putting the glow dodge lights. But in this case, the painting was already pretty dark to begin with, so I didn't need to do that. And and yeah, not not much not much else to say about that. In the end, I think the whole thing turned out pretty nice. Kind of looks like a children's book page, especially with all that just like empty space going on in the upper right corner. Like I think that would be a perfect spot to like put a word bubble and put some like story stuff in there. Heck, maybe in the future I could I could I could make a whole Corby children's book. That actually might be pretty fun, but I have I don't really know what his story is yet cuz he's he's still too new. He's still he's still fresh. Fresh out of the the OC vault. <laughs> For now though, how about we have some fun and get you, yes you, watching this, uh, involved. Since it's going to take me some time to complete Corby the Amigurumi, I figured why not host a draw this in your style challenge in the meantime. So, if you want something fun to draw and get featured in a future video of mine, listen up. To participate, all you gotta do is draw Corby, this character, in your style. I'll be posting this illustration of Corby in the tree branch uh, on Instagram so you can check it out over there if you like. And if you want, you can try drawing the whole scene in your style. But since backgrounds are usually not something people include in draw this in your style challenges because you know they can be a pain, feel free to draw Corby however you like. With backgrounds, without backgrounds, super doodly and sketchy or super detailed and realistic, whatever floats your boat. 
Once you're finished, post your Corby illustration on Instagram or Twitter using the hashtag CorbyDTIYS, which stands for Draw This In Your Style, and I'll feature your piece in a future video. As long as I see it, I have, I have to be able to see it, so make sure you use the hashtag. You can also post on DeviantArt or Newgrounds, but if you do it there, just be sure to also tag me specifically in the caption or somewhere so that I can actually see it. You can also just like send it to me, I don't know, like DM me or something. I'm going to try to include as many pieces as possible into the future video, so yeah, just, just make sure I can, I can see it. Yes, great. <laughs> The deadline to post your piece to get featured will be April 16th, so that leaves about two weeks for you to make some Corby art. It does not matter what your art medium is or your skill level, even if you're not an artist, I hope you'll also give this a try, just duel something up. I just wanted to make something that could spread a little bit of fun and also to, you know, get you guys to draw Corby because I, I need more Corby in my life, okay? But I think we could all use a little more Corby in our lives right now, am I right? Cannot wait to see what you guys make, I'm really looking forward to it. And that is all for today's video! Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. If you'd like to check out my shop, purchase my book or ebook version, or follow me on social media, all the links to everything will be down in the description box. I hope you guys are all doing okay, I'm wishing everybody well, stay healthy, take care of each other, and I will be back soon. Until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, and always cover your sneezes. See ya!